Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another Anyone Can Code video. So, some time ago, I made an AR game that runs on Safari uh, on your iOS device. So, it should pop up on the screen right now. And it's actually a mini game that I made a couple of months ago. It's an interactive USDZ file based on my winning Apple WWDC20 entry. You can actually try it on your iPhone or iPad uh, by going to the link in the description or on the top right corner uh, of the screen. This is a USDZ file uh, and USDZ is a Pixar 3D file format where you can actually view these files as an AR experience on browsers using AR Quick Look. Uh, and you can do this without having to use an a separate app which is so much more convenient rather than having to upload it to the app store or uh, despite it being you know a small mini game and today we're going to create an interactive usdc file with apple's reality composer and today there's no coding involved so if you have no coding experience you can just jump straight into it and it's going to be quite a simple and fun tutorial so let's get started Today, what we're going to make is a very simple AR experience. As you can see on screen, it's uh, basically it's just a soccer ball, uh, and if you tap on it, it flings straight into this uh, toy drummer. Uh, and then it tips over, and it just says something. So that's really it. And today we're going to, going to use an app called Reality Composer, which is available, uh, well, it comes with Xcode. So if you download Xcode on the Mac App Store, if you don't already have it, uh, it, you can already just you know open it up it's yeah uh, anyways I'm just gonna go straight ahead uh, and click new document then after that I have to choose an anchor so I'm gonna choose horizontal and make sure this use template content is uh, disabled right here as you can see uh, and I'm just going to select choose and the template content is really just like one cube with some text and that's not really necessary for this video. Uh, quick disclaimer, uh, Reality Composer is more of a, I guess, prototyping app. So you can create your own objects, you can have it do stuff, but it's not used to make full apps or games. We're only using it because it requires no coding, which is a really good thing about this. And also that, well, it's good to make the USDZ uh, experiences. Uh, especially those interactive ones. Anyways, uh, I, I'm just going to uh, show you how to move around. So, uh, I think it's a right click drag on a mouse, but anyways, two fingers, and then if you drag, well, it drags. Uh, you can just move around and then uh, left click and drag or click and drag. That's how you pan around. <laughs> There's not really much I can say about this, but if you do want to know more about React Composer, up the top right corner is a uh, another tutorial made by me about uh, more about React Composer and also there is some coding stuff about it. But you can focus on only the React Composer stuff if you, if you are interested in only just that. Uh, anyways, uh, let's start creating the project. So. First of all, uh, if I go ahead uh, and press this add button, I'm going to go over down here to the activities section. I'm going to scroll down to the sports section and I'm going to add this soccer ball. And there you go. Uh, right, I just double clicked and it's right here. And all I really need to do here is over in this properties section, uh, I am going to, uh, or if you don't have it open, you can just toggle it on and off with this button here. And you can just scroll down and uh, turn on the physics participates uh, section. And then if I scroll down here, I can set the motion type to dynamic. So all that's going to do right at the moment is just make the ball be able to bounce, fall down and do all that. But at the moment, the ground here, uh, if I just select out of the ball, so if I don't select the uh, ball, it does show all the scene uh, options. And yeah, as you can see, objects can collide with plane. Basically, uh, the plane is already like, like a collision surface, which is very useful. 
Uh, anyways, I'm gonna add another thing, which is the toy drummer. So if I scroll down here, there are some toys. And I can add them in, but these don't include animations, which is why I'm gonna import my own. Uh, which I can use with the import button, but I'm gonna show you another way. Uh, but first of all, let me just grab the object, or the thing that we're going to use. Uh, this is a... I actually got the, all the models from Apple. So yeah, thanks Apple for all these uh, models that you can have here. So yeah, these models here are, are free. It's on the developer website. Link to it down below or in the top right hand corner, if it is there. Uh, but it should be. It should be. Uh, anyways. Yeah, so right here, you've got like, yeah, you've got the toy drummer right here. And if you're on Mac, you can just click on it and it instantly downloads. Uh, however, some of you might be wondering how to add that, uh, how to add your own custom objects. And I'm going to make uh, the, I'm going to use the the earlier example from the intro, which was, you know, the WWDC experience. I'm going to use that as an example as to how to make it. What you have to do is uh, use a 3D modeling software. For me, it that was uh, Blender. Then I created all those models. I then exported it as a USD format uh, because Blender doesn't uh, just support USDC. It's only USD, which is actually somewhat different. Anyways, I then convert this in Reality Converter, which actually converts uh, 3D models of other types into USDC. And it already comes with Xcode, just like Reality Composer. You can just open that up and use it. But for the moment, I'm just gonna use this toy drummer, which I've already gone ahead and downloaded. So I'm just gonna go over here. It should load in, and there you go. I'm gonna select it. Set the scale to 500%. And also, if you do want to fine tune some uh, positioning, you can, al you can always use these arrows and, this, and these rings change the angle. Uh, that's really it. Or you can use this transform section to fine tune some stuff. So, for example, I'm going to set this to you know, minus 100 cm as z axis, and everything else is just fine as it is. Perfect. Uh, and one more thing that we need to add is, if I go over to a basic section, is an exclamation bubble. I'm going to plop it down here. I'm going to use the arrows to move it up. Probably set this to like 150% scale. 150%. Like that. And there you go. Uh, this is, oh, let me keep that selected. Uh, I'm going to change the color first of all. So so the message color is going to be white, but that means that it's going to look invisible. Uh, so that's why I need to ch change the bubble color to some uh, dark blue color. And I'm also going to change the spike edge color, which is like the edge here, to a to an orange color. There you go. Uh, and then if I scroll down, I'm going to change this text to something like, the ball is a sentient being. Oh no, well, sentient being. <laughs> Anyways, there you go. And I'm gonna set the style here to bold. I'm gonna set the scale to 100%. That's really it. That's all I need to do for all the positioning. So, all that's left right now, so I'm gonna move myself back here. I'm also gonna close this Safari, since I don't need that at the moment. As I said, that length is down in the description, my map is being blocked by QuickTime. Oh, it disappeared. <laughs> oh, uh, anyways, time to do a behavior. So this is all like the, you know, all the interactive stuff. Oh, here I am. Uh, but yeah, if I go ahead, uh, open up the behaviors section, and there you go, behaviors. So time to add our first behavior. If I press a plus button, I'm gonna select a start hidden uh, preset, which already, you know, makes all this stuff for us. Uh, over in the hide, uh, or if I go ahead and select this hide action, I can select this uh, speech bubble, and that's all I need to do. Uh, so basically, it's just hiding the speech bubble. Uh, and basically, the trigger is just what triggers it, what starts it, and this is when the scene has 
started, basically. Uh, if I want to try out what's happening, uh, or I just want to try out just this one action, I can always press this uh, this button here, and then it already hides it. Likewise, if I want to uh, do the entire action sequence, there's this play button, or if I want to play the uh, entire uh, project, or the entire scene, there is a play button right here. Or you can press the space button. Uh, which does the exact same thing as pressing this button. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead create another one. Uh, this time I'm gonna create my custom be uh, custom behavior. The trigger here is gonna be uh, scene start as well, but the action is also going to it's just going to be a USDZ animation. I'm gonna select the uh, the toy drummer as our USDZ animation thing, and then. I am going to go over here, as you can see, there is a looping button, which will have this repeat forever. If I uh, preview this action, it just starts playing. That's perfect. Uh, and another thing, we need to, uh, to fling the ball, so I'm going to create a tap and add force uh, thing. So this tap, if I select on it, it's asking me, what do I want uh, to have affected? That's going to be the tap. Uh, that's going to be a soccer ball. And for add force, this is also going to be a soccer ball. And I can just click it down again. My velocity here is going to be um, down here is going to be 20 kilometers per hour because I want it to be somewhat powerful, but not like overwhelmingly pow powerful. Uh, now I'm just going to make this, just going to put this down here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, check the properties, make sure every, all the physics is fine. Oh yes, I forgot the physics for the toy drummer. Uh, let me just enable that and set that motion type to dynamic. One other thing I want to show you is the physics material, uh, which is which I can set to wood because, well, it kind of feel like, feels like wood. So if I want to, if it feels like wood, then I think the physics material should be wood. So it acts as if it would be wood. Um, for example, you know, if you think of rubber, rubber would be like a bouncy material. Uh, anyways, uh, that's all. That's all there is, uh, and that's basically the main mechanics. That's uh, yeah. Uh, but one final thing that I want to add is a uh, custom behavior, which is going to be a collision event. So the trigger is going to be a collide. Uh, I'm going to set the affected objects to the soccer ball. And then I'm going to check if it collides with the, uh, the toy drummer. Then for the action sequence, I'm going to go down to here uh, and add a wait action. So I'm going to have this wait for about one second. Then once that's done, I'm going to show the speech bubble. Uh, this duration is going to set it to 0 0.3 seconds and the motion type is going to be scale. Uh, because I want the scale to, I want it to scale up in about 0 0.3 seconds, and I'm gonna leave the rest of these as is. You can play around with those other uh, things, but yeah, that's all. That's really it. So, time to play it. I'm just gonna go ahead, press spacebar, and see if it works. So I tap the ball, gets knocked back. Says this ball is a sentient being, and yeah. Uh, although I do want this to, I need to change the angling so it actually gets knocked over, so something like that. So play, tap soccer ball, gets knocked over. Wow, amazing. <laughs> and that's really it, that's all there is. Um, and two other things, uh, first of all, uh, if you do want to export this as a USDZ file, which is the entire point of this video, uh, first of all, you need to go over to Preferences and make sure that Enable USDC Support is on. Uh, that allows you to export the file as a USDC file. And then up here, if I go over to File, Export, then I can export the project as a USDC file. And that's it. You can export, do whatever. Uh, if you want, if you don't have a website where you can test this out. You can really just simply like airdrop this to your iOS device or you can put it up 
in iCloud Drive, where you can then uh, open it in the Files app uh, off your on your iOS device. It's really simple, uh, but if you do, uh, for those people who have their own website, if you want to try it out, like if you want to make your own, uh, if you want to put it in, this is all the code there is. It's an A-link, uh, basically just a link to go somewhere. REF, AR, so it basically shows that it's, oh, it's an AR file. Um, like, you know, open this in quick look. That's basically what it's trying to say. And then href is the USDZ, the link to the USDZ file uh, where you want to open it. Of course, if you're not experienced with HTML or making websites, ignore this part. This is only for those web developers who might be wondering uh, about this. Anyways, that's all I have to say. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it off with a no, with a short video of what's uh, of the preview. But yeah, that's all I really need to do. Thanks.